hello lovelies welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking in today's tutorial is so spectacular because we'll be learning how to make this beautiful unique gathered or pleated to band cap which has this ruffles design and crinoline embellishment on it if you are new to this channel thank you so much for coming thank you for watching our video please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel it is absolutely free and we have lots of amazing tutorials for you now the materials needed for today's tutorial include scuba fabric of which one yard will be more than enough your big size of crinoline your scissors your trimming and your gum your accessories for embellishment your matching color of thread and needle as well as your measuring tape for this tutorial we're going to be working with the scuba fabric our design has the tuban cap then it has this flap on one side with crinoline embellishment so first and foremost we need a tuban base and I've done mine. This is the gathered Suban cap, so this is it. And then, before we proceed to our design, to start the tutorial properly, we'll be starting with how to make the gathered applied Suban cap, and thereafter we'll make the multiple design on it. I have my fabric cut out. Then for the base, I'm working with 26 inches for the head circumference by 20 inches for the width so the measurement for my fabric for the base is 26 inches for the head circumference 20 inches for the width the head circumference is also the length and it is drawn across the more stretchy part of the fabric then for my band i'm using 22 inches for the length which is the head circumference and the width is 4.5 inches now, I haven't done that, I'm going to get the fabric for my base and we're going to be marking it, of which I already did before now, but I'll go on to illustrate how it is to be done. Now, coming to the pleats that is to be on the fabric, I don't know if you can see my lines, although they are faint, but I can see them properly. You first of all have to decide what the interval or the space or allowance between each marked line should be. For me, I'm using 1.5 inches, of which you can try to use either 1 inch or 2 inches, depends on your preference. But for me, I'm using 1.5 inches. And then, we'll get the measuring tape. Mark out, one, measure and mark out 1.5 inches on your fabric. Measure and mark out. Measure and mark out. Measure and mark out. And after doing that, you get your ruler and use it to mark out the mark, uh, the already marked out lines. And that is what you do from the top of the fabric till you get to the end of the fabric. But then another option that is faster and easier is to get a ruler which is the same measurement as your interval. So let's say for instance, this ruler which I have here, is about 1.5 inches for the width which is the same as the measurement I want to use so all I have to do is to get my ruler place it down this way and then go ahead and then start marking out my lines without having to use my measuring tape to mark out the lines this is much so much more this is much more faster and easier so if you want to use one inch get the ruler that is one inch wide if you want to use two inches get a ruler that is two inches wide so that is how to go about that now after marking your fabric with your lines you go ahead to sew now when it comes to sewing you pick it each marked line fold it down and sew from one end of the fabric to the other pick the other marked line sew it down from one end of the fabric to the other in that order until you have sewn down the entire fabric please kindly note that your markings should be on the wrong side of your fabric especially if you are working with the fabric that has a wrong side and a fine side so i'm going to go back to sew down and after sewing I'll get so right here i have my fabric i'm done sewing along the um, marked lines this is the wrong side of my fabric and this is the right side so what i'll be doing next is that i will get my fabric 
fold it into two equal halves and then make a notch at the middle. So that is done. I will get the fabric for my band also and then fold into two as well and also make a notch at the middle on both sides. Now having done that, I'll get the fabric for the base, place on my working surface and then I'm going to place it with the fine side facing me. Meanwhile, I will get my band and then fold it into two equal halves with the wrong side inside and the fine side outside. And then I'm going to place it at the middle, okay? Ensure that the middle of your fabric for the base and the middle of your fabric where you notched on your band aligns together. And then as soon as that is done, I'm going to place it on my sewing machine and I'll be stitching it down from this end to this end. Now, if you observe carefully, you see that there's a little bit of allowance at this edge and also another allowance at this edge. That is what is going to give it the backdrop effect. So I'm going to stitch this and as soon as I'm done, Okay. I have my fabric already sewn. As you can see, I have the band added to the fabric. This is the fine side and this is the wrong side. As soon as we are done with this, we'll go ahead to fold our fabric into two equal halves to enable us to locate the middle of the fabric and then we'll mark it. So if you look carefully at my fabric, you'll see that I've made a mark across the middle of the fabric. So that is it. So we will now make the gathers at the middle of the cap. To do that, I have my needle and thread already doubled and knotted at the end. And I will start by passing it in from the wrong side of the turban cap. And I will take it out. Now, whatever you are working on, you ensure that it is along the middle of this fabric on the marked line which you have drawn earlier. So this is what we do. As soon as it's out from the wrong side of the turban cap, can see where it's coming from at the edge of the band. I'll go ahead to pick this first pleat and then fold it into two. I'll pick the pleat, fold it into two, and pass my needle, my needle and thread in. So that is it. So as soon as it's out, I'll continue in the same order. I'll keep picking each pleat and then passing my needle and thread through it at the middle. Pick the next pleat, pass my needle and thread through it. Pick it again, fold it into two, and then pass my needle and thread through it in that order until I get to the edge. Now, whatever I'm doing, I'm not getting to this last pleat here, this last um, line here. I'm stopping at the second to the last split because this last split is going to be for sewing. So I'm stopping at this second to the last split. I'm not working on this very last one. Work. I've made my gathers at the middle of the fabric and I've gotten to the end so I have this last pleat free. I'll put my fabric and then go back to secure my thread and cut off the excess thread. So this is mine. I'm done with securing my thread and then I'll go ahead to fold my cap into two equal halves this way and I'm going to be stitching this down. So this is how the stitching is going to be done. I will stitch on the band this way. After stitching it, I'll stitch it down, take it down this way again, I'll stitch it to this end, then stitch it down to this very end. And from this end, when I get to this end, I'll stitch it down to this very end here. So right here, I have my band cap already soon. I've sewn down this edge. 
I've sewn down this edge and then I extended it down to this very end and from this end I also extended it down to this end. So what we'll be doing next is that we'll be making the running stitch at the edge of the fabric in order to also form gathers at the back to give us that to bank up. Now my running stitch is coming immediately after the band. I'm starting from here and I'm making it down to this very end. So I'll just start by passing my fabric, my needle and thread in and out of my fabric until I get to the end. Then I'll go back, secure the excess thread and then get back. So this is it, and I'm turning my fabric inside out. I have my gathered or pleated to band cap here. This is the front view, and then this is the back view. So this is all to it. So set this aside while we work on the design, which will be attached to our to well, band. design itself, I have my fabric here. And the measurement of my fabric, of my scuba fabric is 25 inches. 25 inches by 15 inches so the length is 25 inches and the width is 15 inches so this is what we'll do now i'm going to fold my fabric into two now while folding it into two the wrong side should be facing you and the fine side should be inside okay so the fine side inside and the wrong side facing you now i'm supposed to take this to my sewing machine and sew it that means i'll close this end and then sew it down sew it down to this end then when i get here i'll leave a few inches allowance for turning the fabric inside out that's what i'm supposed to do take it to the machine and sew but outside that without um, making a sewing stitch on it i can use my needle and thread to do that so what i have to do is i'm going to be i'll first secure my thread and then i'll be making a running stitch through the end where I'm supposed to make my sewing stitch now if you decide to make your sewing stitch after making your sewing stitch you also have to make the running stitch too just the way we used to make our to band cap we'll first um, close the end and then also make a running stitch it's the same way so you can make your running stitch sorry your sewing stitch with your sewing machine and then come back to make your running stitch or better still just make your running stitch without the sewing stitch just as i'm doing so i'm done with this end i will continue now like i said earlier the measurement for this piece of fabric that i'm working on is 25 by 15 and 25 inches is more than half a yard now if for instance you are working on a budget or you're working with a budget and your client is not paying you that way and you want to make economize your materials and instead of getting one yard you can also make use of a um, half yard for both the cap and this design itself so by then the length of your since I have a yard is 18 inches the length of yours will be 18 inches or 17 inches by 15 inches or you also decrease it to 13 inches for the width However, I made use of one yard for this design because of how I want it to be seen. If you're working on a budget, you can as well use half yard, but then you have to decrease the measurement to be able to utilize the half yard for both the cap and the design itself. But then your design will end up being something smaller because of the difference in measurements. So this is it. I've made my running stitch down to this end and I have this um, small space open where we used to turn my fabric inside out now i want to emphasize that you don't have to pull it very tight it should be a bit free okay then you can decide to tie it at this point or then turn your fabric inside out first before tying it to secure it so from this point here i'm going to turn my fabric inside out So after turning my fabric inside that, this is what I have, this is how it looks like. Now I'm going to be tacking this down my base, so I'm just going to arrange it properly. Remember I've not um, cut off my thread from here, so I'll just set this how I want it to be, how free or how tight 
I want it to be then I'm now going to close this end you still using my needle and thread and secure and cut off the SS thread to close the end I'll just fold this inside I secured my thread and I've cut off the SS thread and then I have it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my two band cap. And so if it's either the right side or the left side that I want to attach it to. So I will still keep adjusting and I'm going to place it down this way. Now I have to tag this to the base. So I'm just going to open now you have to decide do you want it to come in front of the band? That is this way. Do you want it to come in front of the band? Or you want it to come after the band so that you can banish the front of your band? Whichever one you decide or how you prefer, to prefer it. Now you have to set the flap the way you want it to be. And you can make it of your dummy head to set it to if it's also more convenient for you. I have my dummy head and my band cap is on it. Now I'll get the other fabric that I just finished working on. And then I'll deset it and decide how I want to place it on my cap. So this is it because we have to tack it down to the cap. Like I said earlier, you decide should it come after the band this way or should it start from the band? So mine will start a bit after the band and then I'm going to, I'm not tacking it down like this is where we so, so I'm not tacking it down like this. I have to open it up a bit, like open it up this way and place it on the cap, something of that sort, yes, but not very wide. Then I will use my needle and thread to tack it down. Then if I want, like if I want to get something like ruffle-like, ruffle-like surface, as I tack, I will pleat it a bit, and then as I tack, I will pleat it a bit. As I tack, I'll pleat it a bit so that I can get some sort of pleating on the front part of it. So that's just how it is. Now I'm going to put this up the dummy head because it's more convenient for me tacking on my working surface down the dummy head. So this is it now. And then I'm going to pass my needle and thread from inside. And then I'll bring my needle and thread out and take it back inside again. So this is it. I've secured that end. I'll open it. Like I said, I'll open it up a bit. Then if I want it to have pleats of any sort, I'll pleat as I tack. So this is it now. And then pass my needle and thread again and tack. You, you have to use a matching color of thread so that should in case your thread has to show up, it won't be visible. then i'll keep tacking this way so i'm tacking very close to the end of the fabric So I'll keep tacking this way. Thank you so much. And that's just how I'll continue to I've gotten to the end of my work. Now I'm done tacking my work down to my cap. 
So what we are going to do next is to embellish with accessories. I'll be starting with the crinoline embellishment. I have my crinoline here. This is the white crinoline or the big crinoline which is about six or seven inches wide. And I have you're making use of gold color. Now you can see that the ends of the crinoline they are free. What I have here is 18 inches, which is half a yard. Now the size of your fabric that is attached to your band cap will determine the size of crinoline that should be used. Now but if you look at the edges, they are fraying, that means they are always losing. Now in order to secure this, I'm going to gather this end and then use my thread to tie it down to hold it in place. The same thing for the other end. So I have my work here, one end secured. So this is my cap, and then I'll flip it over to the back this way. And then I'm going to place, you either use gum or use your needle and thread. So this is it, starting from this end. I'm going to start stacking it down. It's going to take a while, so it requires patience. I'm going to start stacking it down. I'll tack it down until I'm sure that it's very much secure. Then I'm going to be folding folding this down this way. Now if you have the you can use the but I prefer tacking it with needle and thread. So I'll just get my pin to help me secure the end. Then when I'm done tacking, I'll have the pin sticking out. So this is it. Now, I also have this other end. I will set it in place and also tie this end too to secure it. Then tack it at the back, down at the back here. So, I've started tacking this point. This is how I will go around till I've finished tacking this crinoline down to the back of my fabric. Like I said earlier, you can also use gold. Now, I want to emphasize that while tacking, you are not tacking both sides of the fabric. You have to lift this fabric alone so that you can pass through only one side of the fabric. But if you are passing through both sides of the fabric, it will show at the front side of your work. So this is it. This is my needle and thread. Okay. If you can use stitches that are smaller than you, smaller than this i meant to say it's very much okay however it doesn't really mean because i'm going to further embellish it with my trimming so that should cover these stitches i'm making that's why i'm not bothered about it Okay, so I'm going to secure this and then tie it at this point. I'll tie this part here and tack it down at the back the way I had started earlier. So this is my work with the crinoline embellishment added to it. And then this is the back view. Now if you are looking at this edge, you see some stitches. So we have to hide it and that is where the use of our trimming and our gum now comes in place. So I have my trimming here and I have my gum. Now I'm going to apply enough gum on my trimming. Okay? Enough gum. Or better still, I can apply it at the edge of the crinoline. Or if you prefer to use candy gum and glue gum, you can do that. So I'm gradually going to be applying gum and gluing this down. Till I've covered this entire 
edge of quinoni with my trimming you can use any other trimming in place of this particular trimming it doesn't matter so far it beautifies your work and hides the stitches that were sewn now this is my work and as you can see the back i've embellished it with my trimming now coming to the front i have this flower accessory here that i want to use in embellishing the front this way this still requires gum and I prefer using candy gum and glue gum for such kind of accessory so that it can hold it down tight. Then I have these pearls here. I'm going to glue the pearls down on the fabric how I want it to embellish the front of the fabric. Now, I haven't done that. I also have another trimming here. And this trimming is what I'm going to use to embellish this side because I don't want to leave this side so plain. So I'm still going to use gum too and then gum this down to this side of my fabric. Then also use gum to glue down my flower accessory to it and finally place my pearls on it. So that is all that is left to end this particular work. So this is the side view. The midwire, the flower embellishment. Attach my pairs on the side where I have my crinoline. So at the end of the day, as soon as everything is done, this is the final look of my design. So this is all. Everything is now in place. Please note that the kind of accessory that you use and the way you embellish your work depends on whatever you prefer or as requested by your clients. And this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Please like, share, and leave a comment in the comment section. Also do well to follow us on our social media platforms. We're on Facebook and on Instagram as Jenny Concept. Thank you for watching. Until our next tutorial. Bye.